Hey everyone and welcome back. Uh, my name is Quibus and today we'll be taking a look at how to safely and securely store your Terraform state file. The reason this is important is that if you delete your state file or you lose it or corrupt it in some form, uh, Terraform doesn't know what infrastructure it previously created and it'll try and create all the infrastructure from scratch again. And as you can imagine, that's going to lead to a massive mess. So what we'll do is I'll show you how to configure Terraform to store this in um, Amazon S3 as one of the backends that you can store it in. And then also what I'll do is I'll show you what happens if the Terraform uh, state file goes missing and Terraform doesn't know how to handle the infrastructure anymore. So let's jump straight into the console and let me show you how this works. Okay, so we are back in the AWS console and what I have in front of me is the um, GUI that allows me to create a new bucket in S3. So we're going to call this bucket TF YouTube demo and we're going to go ahead and um, create this bucket now um, with nothing in it. So once that bucket has been created, uh, let me just grab the name so long. If I go to TF, there we go, TF YouTube demo. So as you can see, this bucket is completely empty. So let us Sorry, grab that bucket name if it allows me. Nope, it won't. Um, let's grab it from here. There we go. Cool. And now we're going to head back to our IDE. So this is where we left off last time. Um, if you didn't uh, um, watch that episode yet, it's a, an overview to how to get started with Terraform on AWS um, from nothing to how to install Terraform, etc. There's a link up above if you want to go check it out. So where we are is we have got a single Terraform file that provisions a, a single EC2 instance for us. And what we're gonna do now is take a look at this terraform.tf state file over here and what it is and how it changes. So if I open up this file, what I can see is that it is just a plain JSON file and it's got a couple of parameters in here, version, Terraform version, uh, the serial, uh, the lineage of the specific um, state file, some outputs and resources as well. So at the moment there's nothing because we don't have any infrastructure because we destroyed everything. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and say Terraform um, apply like we did previously. I'm not going to be using a plan file for this at the moment uh, just um, to make it a bit quicker to um, have everything created. Now we're going to say yes over here. We're going to keep an eye on our EC2 console over here. If I refresh this, uh, we should see that uh, the new instance is busy spinning up. And over here, you can actually see that old instance that still hasn't terminated completely. Oh, well, it's completed, completely terminated, but it hasn't been removed from our console yet. Um, there's a cleanup job that runs at um, specific intervals that will go and clean this up for us. So while this is running, we can head back to our console over here and we can see that it took 12 seconds to create. And also what we can see all of a sudden here in the background is that our terraform.tf state file suddenly has got more information in it. So let's take a look in terms of what we see here. What we can see is that there's a resource called uh, data, which is that AWS AMI uh, data lookup. And what we can see is that friendly name that we give it, which is Cloud Quibus. Um, and then also in here, we can actually see the values. So the image that it found is this specific one, which is uh, the MI with ID uh, 06, F7, and et cetera over there. And we can see all the values of that MI lookup that it did. So it actually saves that in the state file when you do a data lookup. Um, and we can see there's quite a lot of properties over here. And over here, we can see when was this image, for example, created and the actual description for it. And you can see here, this is the canonical Ubuntu 20.04 uh, long-term support version for MD64, but architecture, etc., etc., And this one was built on the 17th of the eighth month. So 17th of August. You can see all the other values. Now this is useful because it's the MI that we use, but let's go look at our actual resources. And what we can see over here is that all of a sudden here is a type called AWS instance. And we can see this is the name is that sample name that we have over here in our file. If we go down here, which matches that sample over there. And then what it has is all the actual attributes of our instance that we have inside the EC2 console. So let's say we had an issue where for some reason our Terraform state files went missing, both the actual TF state file as well as the backup file. Now the backup file is um, the previous version of Terraform before it ran the last successful apply. So in our case, because we started out with no infrastructure, this is the empty one. So let's go ahead and actually move these two away by saying uh, move uh, terraform.tf state. We're going to move it one directory up. So we're keeping them, but they're gone now. Now what happens is let's say I go ahead and say terraform plan. Because the state file is missing, it doesn't know of any previous state that it actually managed. And it's going to go and tell us, hey, I need to go create an EC2 instance. So let's take a look at that. We can see it wants to add one. We can scroll up and this looks the same as it did previously. And if I actually run plan now, um, sorry, apply now, it'll go and create a new infrastructure instance. 
Um, the reason is it no longer knows about that old one because all of that knowledge is encapsulated inside that state file. So the state file is super important. We definitely don't want to lose it. So let's not do this and let's bring back our previous state files. So I'm going to go grab those Terraform um, .tf state files. Uh, we're going to move both of them to this directory again. And now I can, what I can do is I can do, um, uh, sorry, a plan. If I rerun, not that, sorry, Terraform plan like that. What we can see now is that it'll tell us that there aren't any infrastructure changes because guess what? It now has got the state file again. It knows the, in the instance is there and nothing has changed since then, which is good. So how do we go about securing this state file? Well, the answer is you can configure a remote state. So let's go take a look at what that looks like. So we go Terraform uh, remote state S3 because Terraform has got great documentation. You can see over here there is a backend type called S3. So what we can see is we grab this example from um, the uh, config of, or sorry, the sample documentation over here. We go back here. Now, Terraform actually will look at multiple .tf files in the same directory. So while we could put this inside this um, same file if we wanted to, what we could also do is we could um, define a new one called um, remote state uh, .tf, like that. And we open the file and we paste that in there. Now, what we need to do in this block, so similar to other Terraform blocks, is um, the fact that it starts with Terraform over here defines and tells Terraform that this is a configuration for Terraform, which is also why it's highlighted in purple in the ID. Then we tell it what type of configuration. In this case, it's a backend. We tell it what type of backend, which is S3. And now we've got some values over here that we have to set. So the first value is the actual bucket name. Now, if we go back here, the bucket name was TF YouTube Demo. So we set that. Our bucket is actually in EU uh, West one, uh, which is Ireland. And this key is the actual uh, key and, um, and which is effectively the path to the state file that we want to save. So in our case, what we're going to do is let's call it um, um, YouTube uh, demo um, for the folder we want to put it in. And then we're going to call it the uh, Terraform uh, .tf state file. Okay. So now that we've got this configured, this is all we need for Terraform to know to use S3 to store the state file. So let's go ahead and see what happens now when we run Terraform plan. So we're going to run Terraform plan, and this will give us an error. There we go. This error actually tells us, if we scroll up a little bit, is that backend reinitialization is required. Please run Terraform in it. The reason is that during initialization, it actually sets up some configs, move files around into different folders so it knows where, for example, the state file is being stored. We are moving the state file, so it needs to update its local configuration to be able to handle that. So let's go ahead and say Terraform init. Let me clean this up like that. And it's going to ask us, um, do you want to copy the existing state to the new bucket? And in our case, we definitely want to because guess what? We have existing infrastructure. So we are going to say yes. And what this will do is it'll now copy that file to the S3 bucket. Um, and now what we can do is we can go ahead and clean this. And if we run Terraform plan again, we will be in the same state where we don't have to worry about um, that remote state in terms of uh, whether or not we lost track of what infrastructure we created. So now if we go to our S3 bucket over here and refresh it quickly, um, we can open up this specific folder in there and we can see that there is a Terraform state file present in this directory. So now... Let's see what happens if we have that same problem that we had before where we accidentally lose our Terraform state files. So let's move these two back into one folder up. So now we're in the state where you can see over here that we don't have the Terraform state. So this could be a problem, but let's see what Terraform does when we say Terraform plan. It should be able to get that state file from the S3 bucket. And what it'll do is it'll actually refresh the state and we can see that it no longer gets confused because guess what? Our state file is now securely and safely stored inside an S3 bucket, which means we don't lose the infrastructure we previously created. So we can actually now go ahead and delete those files and we no longer have to keep track of the state file locally, which makes it super useful to actually use. So the last thing we want to do for today's episode before we uh, end off is just to quickly uh, clean up. So once again, we are going to run Terraform destroy because we don't want to leave resources running that we are paying for. And I'm just going to hit yes here quickly. And once that is running, we will be done for today. So I hope to see you in the next episode. Thanks everyone for joining. I hope you found this useful. As usual, if you did, 
please hit the subscribe button as well as the like button. This will help other people find this content. Uh, I also do a stream on uh, Mondays and Fridays with my uh, friend and colleague Darko uh, Mezarosh. Um, and we do that at 11 a.m. Central Eastern Time. So if you're interested in that, please head over to twitch.tv slash AWS um, every Monday and Friday. Also, if you did find this useful, hit that subscribe button. It'll allow you to get notifications of when I release the next set of videos. Um, and speaking of next, what I'll do in the next session is take a look at what um, a module is in Terraform and how you can build your own modules to build reusable building blocks um, to make it easier to spin up uh, complex pieces of infrastructure. So see you next time. Bye.